Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello everyone. Happy full moon. This full moon is happening in the early degrees of the sign of Aries, making it a particularly powerful full moon about closures and endings for new beginnings. And it triggering a lot of emotional purging of the past and related to you owning who you are, who you want to be, and walking your talk to create this new cycle of life. And um, this full moon is the cosmic prelude to the last eclipses of the year next month. So it is the essence of closing out this huge self audit and you know, emotional purging to welcome in so much newness related to finances, relationships, um, all of the things that create your material and financial and emotional security in the world, right? So welcoming in so much newness with confidence and having a renewed sense of self, self-worth and new values that are the basis from which you create a new cycle in your life, okay? So take a minute to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, or if you're listening into the podcast, tap the stars to leave us a positive review. And let's get into this astrology overview and spiritual wisdom of the Aries full moon. Okay, so the esoteric and spiritual meaning of this Aries full moon astrology really harkens to everything mentioned in the collective celestial insight for the month of September, where we were talking about the new moon and uh, the astrology aspect of this grand trine and cosmic kite that was really shaping everything this month of September. And for example, in terms of the esoteric symbology of the degree that the Aries full moon is hitting, the symbol is a triangle with wings, right? And so it's therefore relating, even referencing, you know, the significance of the grand trine and the cosmic height aspect that has shaped the month of September. And it's also... Um, referencing in this really divinely intelligent and synchronistic way that there is also another understated grand trine happening with this full moon astrology where um, Saturn and Pisces, Vesta and Cancer and a couple of celestial bodies and points in Libra that are conjunct one another um, are all making a trine with each other. They're in a grand trine. So Ceres and the South Node and Hamea are in Libra forming this trine with Vesta and Cancer and Saturn and Pisces, right? And so um, both of these grand trines have an essence of a triangle with wings, really. And it's about the spiritual theme of the Aries full moon, emphasizing an end and a beginning in terms of knowledge, skills, relationships, and a new sense of values, really um, supporting your life, contributing to an end of a life cycle, and being the means to an end in your new life cycle in terms of you creating things that can really impact your life in a positive way. And cosmically, this full moon is the cosmic prelude to our final solar and lunar eclipses of the year that are happening next month, October, um, and particularly the final set in the Taurus and Scorpio axis. And so it is the end and the beginning, you know, signified by this full moon in Aries, you know, the sign that also signifies the beginning. <laughs> and the end, the alpha and omega, right? And so um, in terms of what is coming to a close with this full moon, this full moon signifies the end of confusion about your life purpose. And it marks the beginning of really moving forward with conviction and confidence from knowledge and wisdom of experience now. 
in terms of knowledge, connections, and more coming into your life now to upgrade your sense of self, self self-worth, and your values so that you attract that in your life, right? And also about these things offering support in your belief and ability to achieve something, right? So um, it's about moving forward with conviction and confidence from knowledge and wisdom of experience now, even as you are still in process though, right? (laughs) And this is exactly the essence of Aries, right? So Aries is often referred to as the baby boss, right? And it's because Aries embody this incredible duality, right, of innate, undeniable, deep wisdom and skill that can really surpass the wisdom and the skill of people who are older and with more world experience who might consider themselves experts in something, while Aries also embody youth and naivete and a particular kind of worldly inexperience, right? Um, But where oftentimes any, you know, lack of worldly experience or any worldly inexperience a lot of times is a result of Aries um, coming up against hardships and barriers, right? Because they're trying to break new ground, right? And um, when you're doing something new, you're also often the one who um, essentially has to experience a lot of trial and error, right? A lot of setbacks, right? Um, And where most of your work is in building the foundation of something or you (laughs) tearing something down, you know, while you are also trying to create something new, right? And so, um, you know, like there's, there's this really interesting quality of like fire and fire and water. It's just a really interesting thing with Aries, right? And their experiences a lot of the times where so much of their life is a considerable amount of destruction um, hardship by betrayal and abuse <laughs> and, you know, the hardships of creating something new where you, you have to also learn the playbook while you also have to stay true to the creative innovation and invention. Right. And so, um, I'm going off on a tangent, right. Talking about Aries, right. But, <laughs> um, this is this is that essence of Aries, that duality, right? Um, so part of, you know, this duality in terms of like their wisdom and skill um, being instinctive versus about worldly experience is because Aries' wisdom and skill is instinctive. It's spiritual. It's Akashic, right? And with them being the sign that's first in the Zodiac, the first born. It is about them essentially being the ones who enter into the world directly from Akasha, you know, that holds all knowledge and wisdom and creation and them essentially still being in touch with that. Um, some consciously and some unconsciously, but again, about that being innately in their DNA, as opposed to being a wisdom and a skill of experience, right? Until it is, right? (laughs) And then when it is, you know, they're the magicians on your ass, okay? And they, you know, they have fully realize their power, you know, as earth angels in the flesh with power to really change the world, right? To shake up the world, right? And that's why we correlate the magician card with the sign of Aries in the tarot, right? So when they when they get all their tools, you know, it's like you you better watch out. You gotta get out of their way, you know? 
And this is precisely what the collective is experiencing in some way in their life. This duality related to um, wisdom from spiritual consciousness and wisdom of experience and, you know, worldly knowledge. So for some, you may be at this crossroad of now enhancing wisdom from developing your spiritual consciousness, where you can combine that with your already developed wisdom of experience and and skill in something, right? And for others, you may be at this moment of enhancing your wisdom of experience, right? Developing a skill or 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 some using some worldly knowledge now, right? And being able to combine that with your already developed spiritual consciousness, right? So that wherever you fall, collective, <laughs> you go forward, reborn now, you know, and able to rebuild things in your life from this new space, right? So, you know, Aries rules wisdom the head. It's about confidence, self-belief, and coming into contact with all of your magician tools to help you realize some untapped potential, right? And so this full moon really crystallizes your knowledge of your untapped potential and puts you in contact with the knowledge and others that help you realize your unrealized potential, right? We have Mars, which is Aries' ruling planet in the sign of Libra right now. We also have, you know, Mars in a direct opposition with Chiron in Aries, right? And then we also have the south node in Libra and then the sun and Maki Maki and Pallas conjunct in Libra, all forming a trine to Chericho in Aquarius, This is about divine wisdom from a long spiritual journey, right? Where one merges and mobilizes, you know, that wisdom with action toward creative invention. That is what this means, right? It's also about the warrior with goodwill finally finding allies, right, that support them, right? So, so much of this, again, with these particular kinds of um, planetary alignments. It's about coming into contact with new relationships and resources that help you develop your skills, new values, awareness, um, sense of self-worth, more money even, and some dreams, right? It's about a new level of self-realization and being in the world, right? And, you know, that tension of how much we can learn and how much we are meant to learn from our solitude, from our independence and spiritual intelligence and trial and error versus how much we can learn and are meant to learn from and with others, right? I have to say that um, some of this astrology does point to that sort of tension and controversy around teachers, leaders, and people um, who abuse their power, you know, um, and who try to harm you and sabotage you when they realize your potential, right, as opposed to lifting you up, right? But, and maybe that can be something that many experience (laughs) or where overall you might be purging pain from these kinds of experiences in the past, right? Um, You know, as wounds and trust issues may be triggered as you are coming into contact with better and more nurturing relationships that actually help you triumph over hardship, loss, Um, or close a long cycle of, you know, um, toxic relationships, right? So a lot of emotional purging is being triggered now, you know, trust issues and issues in knowing your worth and potential core wounds related to family, trust, love, abuse from people in power, abuse and love relationships, systemic barriers, hardships, Just all of these kinds of things are being triggered for emotional purging right now. Um, 
related to us coming close to the end of eclipses along the Taurus and Scorpio axis, which is all about those kinds of things, right? Especially, you know, Mars and Libra being in that direct opposition to Chiron and Aries. You know, we're at that point of karmic closure related to, you know, that Scorpio Taurus eclipse axis um, where it's all coming up, but also we're at a point now where karmas can be transcended, right? And where karma will begin to be repaid according to your dharma, right? Where the people, resources, opportunities, and things coming into your life is about like what I said in, you know, the astrology video for September. It's about like the cosmos like throwing you these lifelines to really help you live your dharma and your dharma is the positive empowered actions you take as the master of your destiny versus accepting fate okay so the message is you know to surrender and purge to make space for the beautiful things that can come into your life, release the emotional blockages, and believe in your deservingness and in your capability, right? Take the medicine of Aries and be confident, daring, and walk your talk. (laughs) You know, Aries is all about walking your talk. Aries is about doing hard things, you know, it's about bossing up. It's about, you know, bossing up, even if you got to cry while you're doing the hard things, you know, and coming up against learning curves, you know, um, for many, this is about trusting that you don't have to do hard things alone anymore. And that you can do anything. So trust yourself. Trust yourself. I hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the UA Light YouTube and podcasts. And leave some comments and positive review of what resonates with you. Share this insight with someone that you love. And take a look at the September scopes um, for relevant. Um, insight and wisdom to support you as we go into eclipse season. Take a look at the eclipse season scopes that are also here. They've been here all year. And let me tell you, (laughs) let me tell you, I went back and I listened to uh, all of the messages related to each of the eclipses and like their overall lessons and also the scopes for the signs that are uh, relevant for for me personally and like <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you I cried okay and it was it was what I needed to hear in that particular moment um and you know it just really is that time where um all of the messages, the insights are super, super relevant as we are closing out eclipse season and where we're going to be going deeper into the sort of energy signatures related to the Aries and Libra eclipses that are going to also be happening next year. So definitely check those out. And if you have not already, Make sure that you are subscribed to UA Light Podcast, right? Wherever it is that you listen to podcasts, you can find the UA Light Celestial Insight Podcast there. And I will be releasing the individual um, eclipse season scopes on there so that you can just have it on audio, baby. You can just check it out whenever you need it, whenever you need some light. <laughs> for the month of October, okay? And so I hope that this helps. Like I said, I hope this aids your journey. Definitely take good care of your hearts. And thanks for listening.